the Ebola breakout. Isn't it just amazing? Hey guys, Cheryl Washington here. You know, this week, what we've known for weeks now about this Ebola breakout, right? But this past week, the headlines about Ebola have just been alarming and terrifying and outrageous. And I just, there's just some things about it that I just find amazing. Now, when I use the word amazing, I don't mean wonderful, grand, and everything. I just mean just to express the level of feeling I have about um, this outbreak and how it's come apart and, you know, and and our reaction to it. You know, I don't know if we, and I'm, I'm talking collectively or really talking about the government specifically, understand just how serious this disease is and well I don't know that it's a disease I'm referring to it as a disease um, I guess it's a virus but how serious this virus is and we just seem to be trying to downplay it I don't know if it's because we don't want you know to cause a mass uh, a massive number of people who are just panicked but I think it's a little late for that right it's just a little too late for that and you look at how callous some people have been, you know, and I think there's enough blame to go around. Um, you know, the CDC, CDC, who just, you know, I guess, I don't know, they just act like they just don't know what they're doing, like their heads are up their behinds or something, because, you know, for them to allow this nurse, the second nurse who came down with Ebola, um, who caught it from that, the person from Africa, um, to get on a plane is outrageous and I don't know if I'm equally outraged or more outraged that she herself got on a plane right because you just treated somebody with Ebola right they died your co-worker just came down with Ebola and now you have a fever and the question you have to yourself is hmm is it safe for me to get on a plane? You know, instead of calling the CDC, she should have been calling 911 saying, I need someone to get me. I just handled an Ebola patient and now I'm starting to have a fever. I mean, what is wrong with these people? There's something fundamentally wrong. And as long as we have people who operate with such poor judgment, do we really, ex and everything is running based on kind of what, an honor system? You know, well, we see what the honor system has gotten us, right? The gentleman from that was in Africa that came over here, I almost don't blame him. I can't say that I would have done the same thing. He knew full well that if he stayed where he was, that he for sure was going to die. He knew that he needed, his best chance was to get his behind to, to the U.S. And the only way he was going to do it was to lie. And that is what's going to continue to happen. And, you know, why we have to even treat them over here, and I don't mean to say them, you know, that's kind of, I don't know, it sounds funny when I say them. But I don't know why we need to treat those who are coming down with this virus here in the U.S., you know. Why can't we, you know, partner uh, with other countries, right? Because why does it just have to be the United States? And actually go over there and treat them folks with the virus where it's happening instead of risking it coming to into other parts of the world okay um the other thing i find just amazing is that there has become this political fight about it and you know i'm not republican i'm not democrat but Generally, I do support our president. Um, very rare do I, I disagree with him, but I, I disagree with the approach on this Ebola. But what amazes me is that now there's party lines. You know, the Republicans, this is our stance. You know, let, let's stop. Let's ground all air flights, right? And, you know, Democrats, well, maybe not so fast. And the amazing part is when it comes to killing people, okay, then we're all in agreement, right? The Republicans and Democrats can happily work together, right? Let's go over into ISIS and kill people, right? 
here we have an opportunity to what? Save people. And here we are again. There's this side and there's this side. Um, so I, my reaction, initial reaction is, yeah, we need to prevent any flights from coming over here. Um, anybody from coming over here from, from West Africa or any areas of the world where, you know, these Ebola outbreaks are really prevalent. Um, the issue that some folks are making against it is that it's going to cause people to sneak into other areas, um, you know, lie into other areas and then f and then try to end up coming to the U.S. anyway. And then it puts us at a disadvantage because they will not have been they will not have been screened properly. Well, you know, I would imagine that there aren't many, if any, direct flights from the U.S. to Africa or Africa back to the U.S. Um, they have to be routing somewhere in Europe, okay? So can we maybe identify what those flights are and prevent those flights from coming over here also? I mean, let's face it, we all know it's about the dollars in this sense. It always, everything comes down to money. It always comes down to money. So, you know, we're not going to want to... Um, to ground any flesh from coming to the U.S. because it's going to cost us kind of big. Um, the other thing I kind of find amazing, interesting, not sure if it's a coincidence or not, but, you know, typically when they are these world events, right, and these tragedies, gas prices steadily incline, right, you know, Somebody sneezed the wrong way, so now gas has to go up 50 cents or 2 cents, 10 cents, right? Now we're having this massive health scare, and gas prices have fallen below $3, okay, for the first time in, oh my goodness, I don't even know how long. I'm not sure there was a relationship here. I'm just making a simple observation. But anyway, you guys, um... I want you all to be safe. You know, you definitely have to. That's why you have to stay prayed up. Use some common sense. And also, use your defensive senses also. Because there are people around you who lack common sense, okay? Like, you know, the woman. Who, I, I mean, it's just outraged to me that she got on that plane just to go help. You know, just to plan a wedding. She was just so determined to get to Ohio because the fact that she even called to ask if she could get on a plane tells me that she knew or thought there's something wrong. And I don't know if she was just in denial, but forget about the wedding, you know, forget about the hundreds of people that she exposed, right? Forget about that. What about herself? Right? Your own health. Now she's let three or four days go by that treatment could have begun. She let those days lapse by so she can go plan a daggone wedding. She could have moved a date or, or let the, her family go try on the dresses and do whatever. She was with her husband. I'm sure she kissed him and did whatever else with him. So, you know, now he's really exposed. I, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, who do you think you are? That's really what I want to say to her. I just, I'm trying to... Sympath I sympathize with her in the sense of I pray for her that she survives this thing. I, I really do. But I'm just so outraged with her. You know, even though, yeah, CDC, oh my gosh, I, I don't even know. That's like a whole separate video to start on some of the stuff they're doing. But right now, my focus is on how she had such poor judgment that you handle an Ebola patient and now you have a fever. I wouldn't be thinking about a wedding. I'd be totally freaked out. And and going to the hospital to just make sure that I'm okay. You can't postpone. Now I feel like I'm talking to her. She can't postpone a wedding for 21 days while she waits. I guess that 21 days is the, is the waiting period to see um, if, if, the vi if she's caught the virus, which obviously she has. So now the wedding is going to be put off indefinitely anyway. And she may have reduced the number of people. Well, she would have reduced the number of people she exposed by a couple of hundred people. She flew there and she flew back. And can we even trust her when she says 
what symptoms she might have felt before she left and when she came back. I mean, can we even believe anything that comes out of her mouth at this point? But she's not the only one, and that's the scary thing. You've got a carnival uh, cruise ship right now that is, I don't even know where they are. Okay, they were in Mexico, or they were supposed to go to Mexico, but Mexico said, nobody, you're not stopping here. You know, somebody gets it. You're not stopping here. So I know that ship, I don't know where they are, but they're on their way back. Where? To us. To us. You know, we just... Judgment, you guys. Judgment. And, you know, another thing I'm going to look into, because I'm just curious, and <clears throat> if you know the answer to this question, please leave it in the comments below. But, you know, does our health care even cover treatment for this type of thing? I'm actually going to look into that. Um... Because I'm just, I'm just curious um, if that's going to be like the next headline is that uh, Ebola patients, uh, insurance carriers don't want to. Because so far, most of the people that have been affected, other than the gentleman that came back from Africa, have been, you know, nurses or doctors or they were out on a mission. So they are pretty much going to be covered. Um... To my knowledge, I don't know of any layman people, you know, who are not non-medical people who have caught this to know whether or not, um, you know, insurance carries this uh, coverage for this type of situation. So if you happen to know that, um, please leave it in the comments below because I'm definitely kind of curious uh, just from my own knowledge uh, of knowing uh, whether or not that is covered. Anyway. This was supposed to be kind of a short video. Um, I did go on a little bit of a rant um, just because, you know, it's it's scary. And I'm going to be flying to Orlando um, later in the week. And, you know, I'm prayed up. I will continue to pray. Um, I'm not really worried per se, um, but I'm on high alert. Put it that way. I'm, I'm on high alert. And I hope you are too, and, and you take care. And I definitely, anyone that's affected by this, uh, family, extensions, whatever, I'm definitely praying for you. Uh, we've, we've got to get this under control. We absolutely have to get this under control. Our number one focus cannot be on money, right? And the cost we may incur by, by grounding flights, okay? Um, our, our concern needs to be with the health of American people and not letting this condition uh, get out of control and you know certainly would also like to know and uh, I'm gonna look into this where this virus came from how it originated you know um, so I, I'm just is this just I just think the story is a lot deeper than what we're getting in the media and I'm, I'm definitely curious about that so this probably won't be the last video that you hear me talking about Ebola. That's essentially what I'm telling you. Um, so you guys, thank you so much for watching my video. Definitely leave your comments below. And I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.